So let's start talking about waivers. That's why you came here. How many of you were family members? Okay, and of those family members, how many have waivers? How many are waiting or hoping to get a waiver? Okay, so we'll talk a little bit of both. Uh, the laws have changed. Uh, as of September 1st, we, got, we have new ways of waiting. So I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about the changes that have happened in waivers and the changes that are going to happen in waivers. So the baseline, and I think it's good for everyone that even has a waiver to understand what a waiver is. We've always had, at least since the mid 60s, Medicaid. Medicaid is a health insurance program for poor people. It's part of President Johnson's Great Society. And the reality, the sad reality for most adults with disabilities is that they're poor. Uh, Medicaid then recognizes that um, if you're under 18, you're obviously a minor, and your parents have the responsibility of taking care of you if you're under 18. Um, so if most of you applied for Medicaid for your child under 18, Medicaid, administered by Job and Family Services offices throughout the state, would look at the entire family income and assets. So if your child's under 18, they look at the entire family's income and assets. If you have a disability and you're 18 years of age or older, you're an adult. And even though I may be living with my family in a million dollar home, and there are two Lexuses in the driveway, if I'm 18, Job and Family Services is not supposed to look at family income and assets. They only look at mine as the person with a disability. So the first thing then people would say are, I'm no Dave's kid. He has a waiver, and they've told me he has to, to get a waiver, you have to be Medicaid eligible. Well, when Cuyahoga County offers, is everyone from Cuyahoga, anyone from outside? Where are you from? Medina? Lake. Portage? Lake? Lake. Summit. Trumbull? Summit? Woo, we got it. Okay. Okay, so if your county board offers you a waiver, and your child is under 18, this is an oversimplification, but Job and Family Services then waives family income and assets. So it is true to get a waiver, you have to be Medicaid eligible. But if you're offered a waiver to a child under 18, they waive family income and assets and only look at the child's income and assets. That's how kids are not only on waivers, but have Medicaid as well, okay? So Medicaid's a health insurance program it's been around since the 1960s. It predates Obamacare by decades. So when people freak out about Obamacare, we've had Medicaid for over 50 years. It's been out there. Uh, if you can navigate it, it's probably the best insurance plan you can have. If you can find the right doctor, most, almost every hospital takes it, almost every pharmacy takes it. There are no deductibles. You have your Medicaid card, you're going to a doctor that accepts Medicaid or one of the Medicaid managed care providers. There is no copay, there's no deductible. You can have Medicaid and private insurance at the same time. So if you've got, blue, if you've got your loved one covered by Blue Cross Blue Shield and they have Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield pays first and Medicaid pays second. Medicaid's a payer of last resort. I'm not a math major, but the key, the two percentages you need to remember are Medicaid's a health insurance program from the federal government. 60-40. 60 percent of anything related to Medicaid is paid for by the federal government, your federal taxes. And 40 percent comes out of the state treasury. So Medicaid is a 60-40 split. It varies according to the economy of Ohio, but 60-40 is a good rough number. Everyone, every state in the country participates in Medicaid. And because the federal government Mint is providing 60%, providing the federal government also has some rules that you have to follow if you have a Medicaid card or if the state is providing Medicaid. One rule is you have to provide hospitalization. You have to provide physician services. 
you have to provide something called home health care. What's home health care? If you know an elderly aunt that fell down and broke her hip, everyone knows of a nurse that came and gave her a bath. That's home health care. But because Medicaid is available for Aunt Mabel who fell down and broke her hip, it's available to everyone that has Medicaid. So that doesn't matter if you have Down syndrome, autism, cerebral palsy. If you have Medicaid, your doctor can pres prescribe home health care, which is, can either be a nurse or more likely than not, it's a home health care aide. That should be, if you're connected with the county board, should be coordinated by your county board. If you're not part of county board, if you just happen to have Medicaid, you get a prescription from your doctor for home health care. If you get that prescription for up to 14 hours a week, you pretty much fly under the radar and it's a deal between your doctor, you, and the home health care agency. So you get a prescription from your doctor from a ho for home health care services. You call the local home health care agencies in your community and say, I've got a child with cerebral palsy who needs someone to help give them a bath. Will you fill my prescription? So your prescription is going to say 14 hours a week, home health care services for activities of daily living. Activities of daily living is getting up, getting dressed, getting a bath, eating, those kinds of things. Um, think Aunt Mabel who fell down and broke her hip. All the things she would need. You can get these services in addition to a waiver. You can get them in addition to the waiver because they're for your health. Medicaid is your health insurance plan. This is where it gets complicated. Medicaid is your health insurance plan. So anything related to doctors and nurses and keeping you healthy is paid for by the Medicaid card. So your doctor visits, your prescriptions, that home health care aid. Okay? Anyone, you ever hear Warrensville Developmental Center? It's down the road here. That's a Medicaid facility. Or Hattie Larlam in Portage County. Um, Gateways to Better Living over in Youngstown. Their program's called Intermediate Care Facilities. An intermediate care facility, in layman's language, is sort of like halfway between a nursing home and a group home. From the outside, it could look just like a group home. It can be four beds and up. Warrensville Developmental Center is a public intermediate care facility. Um, the group home on your corner is probably a private intermediate care facility. Not all group homes, so I don't, don't want to say all group homes are ICFs, but the larger ones are. Hattie Larlam is an intermediate care facility. Those programs are paid for by your Medicaid card, not by the waiver. This really does get confusing sometimes. Uh, your Medicaid card, part of what's called the state plan, your health insurance plan, says that Medicaid in Ohio can pay for an intermediate care facility. Uh, it's very difficult to get into a public intermediate care facility like Warrensville. But if Hattie Larlam in Portage County has an opening in their residential facility that's called an intermediate care facility, and you want that opening, and they're willing to take you, you pay for that with your Medicaid card. Now the same rule applies that if you're an adult, Medicaid eligibility depends on your income and assets. If you're a child, so let's say you're a 12 year old child, your parents live in that million dollar home, but you want a bed at Hattie Larlam. Once Hattie Larlam accepts the child, they only, Medicaid will only look at the child's income and assets. Okay, so someone says, well, you can't move into an intermediate care facility unless you're Medicaid eligible. If they accept you, you cross the threshold, you're Medicaid eligible because the, the system only looks at the child's income and assets. Did I lose anyone? I probably lost everyone. It's just a way for following. And I, I, I'm telling you that because Medicaid also pays for nursing home beds. Yes, sir. What is the amount of uh, income and assets that you have to be below in order to qualify? Okay, so assets is $2,000. Uh, that's, can you get your hands on $2,000? It doesn't have to be $2,000 cash. 
So I graduated from high school and I work at John Eagle and John Eagle has a pension plan. Even though I'm 19 and if I take any of that pension out, I'm gonna get a, a serious penalty. If I can get my hands on it, it's an asset. So if I have a life insurance policy that's whole life and I can go cash it in, that's an asset. Savings account, so uh, every year on the holidays, my grandma buys me a $100 savings bond. It's got my social security number on it. The system knows where, I, where it is and it's an asset. So you can't have your, you can't be able to get your hands on more than $2,000 at any one time. The monthly amount varies. With, we've got Medicaid expansion in Ohio, so it could be over $1,000. Um, that will vary. Now we have a new governor, we're not, you know. Uh, most people with developmental disabilities don't have an issue with it. Uh, most children, whether they have a disability or not, don't have more than $2,000 at any time. Uh, 